Thank you, Hayden. I will be so kind. <laughs> Even though I'm not much of a gentleman, I'm more of a rough man. <laughs> Thank you for the glissando. Uh, I'm going to read my uh, two most recent poems, and I, I read both of these at uh, Karen's salon last weekend. And people seem to like this one. Um, this is called The Scythe. Summer gently mocks me in a synesthetic shift, where a red visual canvas mutes hearing, too, hiding behind the lenses of a pair of sunglasses to fend off temporal anxiety. The ebb and flow of hope are a wooden barge riding waves on tempestuous waters, trying to make it back to the rocky shores called home where the next journey lies beyond the impassable cliffs. Training myself to think in pictures, I trace your damaged wings with charcoal upon an easel, but all the intellectual balladry in the world cannot pry your pearl from the oyster of adulation. The tedium of language metastasizes into the brain, where neurons and axons collude for a taxing ennui that drains all energy from every limb and appendage. We give arbitrary titles to our children so that guilt may have a name to call as it rests upon their shoulders. The moon is erotic, but to genuflect plaintively in dreams is to expose the carotid artery to a machete wielded by the cruel queen of the night. Day brings with it an avalanche of memory but if we wait until limping cerebral lobes are well again, we might yet witness the internal fireworks of a life that is more than just a cue waiting for the scythe that will sever the last ties between heaven and earth. Mm. Thank you, and this one people didn't seem to like, but I'm fond of it, so I'm going to read it. Uh, it's, it's based on a video, actually, a kind of a bizarre video, and uh, uh, well, talk to me about it afterwards, but all I'll say is I could only watch about two seconds of it. Uh, this is called Plague Doctor. Muerte, muerte. One. Plague Doctor appears in the sanatorium, hand flashing with plain text of capital murder, evoking the deaths of 1371. Binaural skull hides an electronic buzz, along with images of dismembered bodies and strangled neck from nylon stockings. And when and where do I scream? I cannot bear to watch such video footage, because the Black Knight haunts me as it is, with all the memories of lips I did not kiss. Two. A prime number cicada hatches within transistor radio's natural evolution. Its masters somehow have the power to post flyers in diverse cities across the globe, although their mission may be clandestine and their servants obscure and obsequious. Death is a game hidden in the recesses of memory's kaleidoscope sculpted by the Japanese warehouse keeper, who too was born within the semiconductor. The rules and regulations are forgotten with the light of the morning sun, although I might wish that the earth would cease to rotate and the crops all die of starvation. Three. Quatrain prophecies from medieval Europe haphazardly predicted wars and famines. Shall they be borne out? Or would death rather sneak up with the aid of Mistress Pan de Fece and place a single finger over the victim's lips, saying, Quiet, quiet, my son. No breath you let out can make a sound any more. This is the end. Let memory evaporate. Let experience dissolve into the night. The evolution of poetry through ages and movements reaches my pen. Before I too die, it is my charge to transpose spooky memetics into blots of ink that the human eye interprets, and with the fleeting time remaining in life, endeavors to turn into understanding known by precious few. 
besides the masked plague doctor. Thank you. Here, here.